What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is Daniel and welcome back to another video. Today we're just going to catch up on the last couple days of NASCAR news and trust me, there's been a lot of news that I still have to cover. I got basically a page and a half of stuff that I need to discuss with you guys. Let's just get into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the Hall of Fame uh, process. So NASCAR has changed the Hall of Fame process. They have now dropped the amount of people that can get into the Hall of Fame from five people to three people. Two from the present day, which is 1961, to now, and one from 1960 back. So a modern day and a present section of that. The existing nomination committee will provide 10 nominees, like a 10 nominee card, for a modern day ballot. And the new honors committee, which is like past champions, uh, people who have won the Ken Squire Award, and past Hall of Famers, will provide five nominees for the Pioneer ballot. Let me just say my opinion on this. This is a very, very good move. Because eventually what was going to happen, in my opinion, it was going to be like the NBA Hall of Fame, where, where you were going to have people who did not deserve to get into the Hall of Fame that were going to get into the Hall of Fame. With this, this is going to ensure that the Hall of Fame is not going to turn into the is going to not going to turn into bad. And it's not going to be really get really, really bad. I like that they're doing this. Number one, it's it's great because, again, you're not going to have too many people getting in, and you're going to run this problem 10 years down the road. And then number two, finally a lot of these people who found a sport who are not currently in the Hall of Fame are going to finally get into the Hall of Fame. So I'm really happy NASCAR made the decision. This is a very, very, very good decision by NASCAR. Now to the next story. So NASCAR has set the preliminary test schedule for the next gen car. So there are going to be six single car tests. So they will basically happen after each race. So Auto Club will be March 2nd and 3rd. Atlanta, March 16th and 17th. Bristol, April 6th and 7th. Dover will take place May 4th and 5th. Then we go to Charlotte, which is June 2nd and 3rd. And Las Vegas will be July 14th and 15th. Here are the team tests for this. So the team tests will not begin till late in the year. So the first one will be at the Charlotte Oval on August 25th and then September 8th. Then they will go to Texas on September 22nd, 23rd. They will go back to the Oval on September 29th, then to the Charlotte Roll for the first time on <clears throat> October 13th. Then they go to Dover on October 13th, 14th, so basically the same day. Then they go to the Roval once again October 20th, 20th and November 10th. Then they go to Las Vegas on November 17th and 18th. Charlotte on November 24th and December 5th, and finally Phoenix on December 16th and 17th. It's very interesting that they're waiting till August to do the multiple car tests. At least finally, we are going to be starting to see more than one car out on the racetrack. I mean, again, it may be a little bit too late. I think right now, here on March 2nd and 3rd, on these first tests, in my personal opinion, they should be testing multiple cars, but at least we're not just going to be consistently doing one car test. We're going to be, looks like we're going to be starting to do multiple cars eventually as the year goes on. So yeah, good, like a test schedule, pretty cool that they got a schedule, just like a, the Cup Series schedule, we got a pretty long schedule for the test. Now to the next story, BJ McLeod will be returning to JD Motorsports, I believe on a full-time basis. Last year, he finished 20th in the standings, in the NASCAR Xfinity Series standings, as he competed in 29 races for JD Motorsports last season. BJ McLeod is honestly a solid driver. I think he's going to do really well in this car. I don't think he's going to make the playoffs, but I think he's going to be a pretty successful as this organization. Top 15 standings possible, especially since the Xfinity Series field is much weaker than last year. I think there's a good opportunity he could do really, really well. I could see even top 10s coming from him. I'm not kidding you. I know that's kind of a big step. Well, top 10 might be a little bit too much. But top 15 is definitely, I can see from BJ McLeod. I think he's pretty successful, and I think he's a good enough driver and solid enough driver to bring home, bring it home. He's going to have to be doing multiple, multiple things, as he is going to be driving for this team and also going to be owning his own team. So that's a pretty interesting concept. Now to the next thing. Larry's Lemonade will be sponsoring Brandon Brown at, at Daytona. Jordan Anderson at AM Racing, which is Austin Wayne Self's organization, We'll be sharing a race shop. This shop was previously occupied for front for front row motorsports. So basically, Austin Wayne sells AM Racing and Jordan Anderson's teams basically are partnering with each other. So basically, it's like an alliance. They're aligning with each other, basically to work together this upcoming season. 
Very good move for both, both organizations. They can work together and get their cars headed in the right track. That's just my opinion on that. Just announced this morning, Jeff Gerhardt has joined JD Motorsports on a part-time basis. He will drive 12 races for the season. Now, here's the thing to know. They are still working on additional sponsor sponsorship so that he can get more races with this organization for the future as the season goes on. He will make his debut, as far as I can tell, at Atlanta Motor Speedway this upcoming this upcoming March. So yeah, really awesome to see. Jeff Earnhardt, in my opinion, I think is a pretty good driver. I think some people give him too much crap. That's just my opinion on that. But Jeff Earnhardt, I think, is a solid enough driver. I think he could do, I think, honestly, well enough to get, I would see maybe a top 10, possibly, there and then with the weekend Xfinity Series field. I think quite a few top 15s is a goal for him, and I think that he just needs to do really, really well in this car because, again, he's getting an opportunity to drive this. Maybe he'll finally show what he's capable of because he did all right at Joe Gibbs, but he really didn't get a op full opportunity there at Joe Gibbs. Now to the next story. Todd Peck has announced his, a Daytona run in the Gander Outdoors Truck Series. Man, the Truck Series field continues to grow here because the truck series field has got I've heard rumors that there's possibly 47 trucks entered in the truck series race. So there's almost one and a half fields for the truck series race. Jesus Christ, the amount of people that are gonna run. It's it's insane. When that at entry list gets announced, it's gonna be insane, man. It's gonna be insane. Now to the next story. Sports Clips has renewed a sponsorship sponsorship with Joe Gibbs. Eric Jones will run five races with this organization. He'll race the Clash, New Hampshire, Darlington, Talladega, and Texas. Kyle Busch will race with them at the Spring Phoenix race. Mark Truex Jr. at Dover. And Denny Hamill will run the lone Xfinity Series race at Darlington that he usually runs. I believe this will be the only race Denny Hamill is going to run in that eight at that one Joe Gibbs car. Because they're expected to have four uh, Joe Gibbs racing cars this upcoming season in the Xfinity Series. Really cool the Sports Coast expanding their, their uh, sponsorship with Joe Gibbs. This is a really, really good move because not only now does Eric Jones got more races with them, but Kyle Busch gets one race. So that's one less race. Kyle Busch has to rely on M&Ms and Skittles and all that. Um, Archer Sr. has got one race filled up. And Denny Hamlin, he's, he already had all his races filled up with FedEx, so it really wasn't going to matter regardless. But again, sponsorship in a much better state. Todd Parrott has joined Rick Ware Racing this upcoming season. He will be part of a team's organizational staff. So, Todd Parrott, in my opinion, should be the crew chief. He's a championship caliber crew chief. He crew chief for Dale Jarrett, won the championship there. I think Todd Parrott could bring a lot to this organization because Rick Ware Racing needs someone to guide them. And when you have a championship caliber crew person like Rick Ware Racing, it's a really good move on their part. And now, finally, Jet Nolan will be racing six races with Nice Motorsports, he will race at Richmond, Iowa, Gateway, Bristol, Martinsville, and Phoenix International Raceway. Jet Nolan, I think, I've never heard of Jet Nolan. This is the first time I've heard of him. I've heard he's a really good racer, but he'll have to prove to me what he's capable of in these six races. If he can do really, really well and at least get at least one or two top tens, I think for me that is going to impress me a lot. But I think his ultimate goal, top 20s. Just get some experience because, again, hes I don't think he's ever raced in the Truck Series 4 or in a top-tier race up to this point. So, yeah, that's all the NASCAR news that I need to catch up on. Jeez, almost 10 minutes. God, God almighty, nine-minute video already. So, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on so you can be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links in the description below for that and combo your opinions on this video. Anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.